Welcome back to Wadcast, guys. Hope you are doing well out there. I'm your host, Wad, as always. And in this video, we're going to be looking at District Attorney Fannie Willis taking Jim Jordan to law school because apparently he missed the day in law school where they discussed the separation of powers and federalism because he's trying to intrude into a local investigation by a district attorney, a local case that's going on, a criminal case in Georgia, specifically the one involved with Donald Trump and the RICO case, the other 18 defendants. And uh, Jim Jordan is trying to stick his nose where it doesn't belong, just like he tried in New York, didn't work. Alvin Bragg is still prosecuting Trump. He wasn't able to stop him, and he's not going to be able to stop Fannie Willis either. But I thought it was interesting to cover this because Fannie Willis uh, basically bitch slapped him with the law because uh, Jim Jordan apparently missed all the relevant days in law school uh, when they taught about the separation of powers. He's trying to intrude into a local district attorney's local prosecutor's uh, right to prosecute criminals. Uh, it is the job of the executive and the judiciary branch to bring charges and prosecute criminals. So it's not uh, Jim Jordan or the federal Congress or even the state Congress in Georgia who has power over District Attorney Fannie Willis. It's the judiciary. So if uh, Fannie Willis's office is doing something wrong, it's up to the judge to stop her. Not, not Jim Jordan, not the federal Congress, the Democrats or Republicans. They can do nothing according to the federal law and jurisprudence and uh, specifically specific cases from the Supreme Court, which we're going to be looking at here, which Fannie Willis cites. And so, yeah, so let's look at, let's jump straight to the lesson here. Okay. So I've told you guys many, many times since the time of uh, English law back more than a thousand years ago, prosecutors have sovereignty in Anglo-Saxon and Anglo-American law, which means that nobody can interfere with the police doing criminal investigations of criminals. That is solely up to to the police and the prosecutors. And after somebody has been indicted, that's the only time that judges can even uh, get to look at the prosecutor's work. Until then, the investigative phase is completely within the right of the police and the prosecutors to do their investigation and decide or not decide to bring charges, okay? After the charges are brought, then the case goes to court, then judges have, a, have a, an opportunity to look at the case and the defendants can defend themselves according to the Fifth and the Sixth Amendment. They have the right to a, a lawyer and a fair trial and all that stuff. Okay, but that doesn't start until the investigation is done. But even after the charges have been brought, there has to be very good reason for the judges to rule uh, against the prosecutors and, for example, dismiss a case if there's not enough evidence or if there's no uh, jurisdiction. There are many reasons why cases are dismissed, but there has to be really good reasons. And but nevertheless, all of that is done between the judge and the prosecutors and the defense attorneys. The Congress, the state Congress, nor the federal Congress ha has no role in this process. So Jim Jordan is sticking his nose into things that has nothing to do with him. And that's exactly what Fannie Willis tells him in this letter. So I've highlighted some parts I want to cover, some uh, major bitch slaps that she does of Jim Jordan because he doesn't understand basic separation of powers and federalism. So Fannie Willis is forced to give him a lesson on that. Okay, so let's get started. Your letter offends principles of state sovereignty. These are people who care, to, these Republicans are people who pretend to care, have pretended to care about states' rights. Now they're spitting on states' rights because they don't like the prosecutor. That's what's happening here because they want to defend their treasonous uh, criminal, President Donald Trump former loser President Donald Trump. The, def the demands in your letter and your efforts at intruding upon the state of Georgia's criminal authority violate constitutional principles of federalism. Criminal uh, prosecutions under state law are primarily the responsibility of the state governments. Unless there's violations of federal law, in which case the DOJ would prosecute criminals. But other than that, it is within the right of the state prosecutors and the local prosecutors in a state to prosecute criminals who have broken their local laws, which this is a RICO case according to violations of Georgia law. So the federal authorities have nothing to do with this. The DOJ is not involved in this case because it's not within their jurisdiction. If they want to bring charges, they have to do it in federal court for violations of federal law. Okay, so this is a state prosecution that Jim Jordan is sticking his nose into. He's violating states' rights of Georgia and uh, the Georgia prosecutors. Congress's lawful prerogative to uh, to interfere with states' administration of cr uh, their criminal law is extremely limited. That's according to both precedents and also the rules of the House itself, which does not interfere with state level uh, criminal investigations. That's the precedent. As the Supreme Court held in U.S. v. Lopez, uh, under our federal system, the states possess primary pi primary authority for defining and enforcing the criminal law. That's from Supreme Court precedent 1995. Uh, furthermore, from Morrison. We can think of no better example of the police power which the founders denied the national government and re reposed in the states than the suppression of crime and 
uh, vindication of its victims. That's why the local prosecutors since the time of England, back before America even existed, prosecutors even in England, even when the king ruled there, which is most, until today really, the king still exists, but even the king didn't interfere with the local prosecutors 99% of the time, okay? Crown prosecutors had sovereignty to prosecute criminals who have broken the law in their counties. England was divided, England and many kingdoms were divided into counties and the county prosecutors were the ones, the, the crown county prosecutors were the ones who decided whether to bring charges or not. It was not the king deciding things. Indeed, because the power to create and enforce the state criminal law is an attribute of state sovereignty, Reserved by the Tenth Amendment, it is necessarily a power of the Constitution. Uh, it is necessary a power the Constitution has not conferred on Congress, meaning the Federal Congress. That's according to New York v. U.S. 1992. The Supreme Court has thus recognized a fundamental uh, policy against federal interference with the state criminal uh, prosecutions. That's from Younger v. Harris, 1971. Pursuant to that rule, the federal and precedent, uh, the federal government must observe a strict policy of no interference with state officers who are charged with the duty of prosecuting offenders against the laws of the state uh, and must decide when and how this is to be done. Again, from Younger. These are important Supreme Court precedents which have established in recent law um, that prosecutors have sovereignty, state prosecutors have sovereignty to bring charges against criminals, and that the federal Congress and federal authorities have no right to interfere. If they want to bring, if the DOJ wants to bring charges, they can do it themselves, but they can't interfere with the state prosecution. Unless there's very good reason. There's some small reasons, like if an FBI agent is killed, then that falls within, even though it happened in a state, it falls within the purview of the Justice Department and they can step in. That's a, that's a very rare uh, example, but there are some reasons. But in this case, there's no reason for the federal authorities to interfere. This is a, this Trump and his allies broke clearly bro broke Georgia laws. That's why they're being prosecuted. It has nothing to do with the federal government. Given that state sovereignty over state criminal law, Congress has hardly any role to play in meddling with its sound administration. Uh, let's see, a couple more sentences here. In light of these principles, your attempt to invoke congressional authority to intrude upon and interfere with an active criminal case in Georgia is flagrantly at odds with the Constitution. The defendants in this case have been charged under state law with committing state crimes, there is absolutely no support for Congress purporting to uh, second guess or somehow supervise an ongoing Georgia criminal investigation and prosecution. Remember that he's asked for documents, sensitive documents related to this prosecution, what the uh, the DA's office is doing. That's what Jim Jordan has, re has requested, and that's what this letter is in response to, basically saying, I'm not giving you anything, okay, because I have no legal obligation to give you anything, and we know why he's doing this for completely political reasons. It's hilarious because he, Jim Jordan and the Republicans are claiming that Fannie Willis is political, but they're the only ones who are political here. Fannie Willis is prosecuting a just disgusting criminal named Donald Trump and his friends for crimes he actually committed. Jim Jordan is trying to protect the criminal because he wants to live off Donald Trump's political power within the Republican Party. It's sick. Okay, that's what it is. And I'm somebody who doesn't give a damn about the Democrats or the Republicans. I don't really care about Fannie Willis either. She seems, I'm very impressed with this letter. That's all I can say. She's sounding like me. She's actually laying down the, the jurisprudence on prosecutorial independence, which I like very much uh, and have iterated on my channel as well. But she's actually backing it up with case law, which is much more impressive than what I do. But yeah, I'm very impressed with this letter. And uh, she's 100% correct. And Jim Jordan is 100% wrong and doing this for purely political reasons to help out his treasonous leader, Donald Trump. OK, that's why he's doing this for his own political benefit so that, you know, the GOP, the, so he can brag to his GOP voter base that he defended Trump. That's why he's doing this. Uh, just a couple more things here. Your letter transgresses separation of power principles. In addition, your demand for information regarding an ongoing criminal prosecution, a core executive function, not a, not a legislative one, is offensive to any notion of the separation of powers that recognize the distinct roles of the executive and legislative functions of government. As the Supreme Court has explained, the executive branch has exclusive authority and absolute discretion to decide whether to prosecute a case. That's That would be the prosecutors, whether local or federal. Congress, in contrast, is barred by precedent from using investigations for law enforcement purposes.
You have thus violated the basic this basic uh, constitutional rule, because he's trying to interfere in this case, that the power to investigate must not be confused with any of the powers of law enforcement. Those powers are assigned under our constitution to the, to the executive and judiciary branch. And that's also that's from another Supreme Court case, Quinn v. U.S. 1955. Okay, so one more here. Your letter, uh, your letter improperly interferes with the administration of criminal justice. There are extremely good reasons why congressional committees have historically avoided interfering with criminal trial proceedings. Sharing non-public information about pending criminal matters may violate local and state confidentiality obligations and professional ethics rules. It may also uh, prejudice defendants, victims, or witnesses, or affect the overall integrity of the proceedings, meaning the trial and pretrial proceedings. In some cases, it could produce a bizarre dual-track discovery scheme that circumvents court rules that are carefully calibrated to ensure compliance with the principles of sound criminal procedure, meaning that if things are released to Jim Jordan, he could release it to the public, things that should not be released until trial. See how that works? There's a reason that evidence is kept kept hidden so that the jury can be unbiased, so it doesn't taint the jury pool, and the information is seen by the people who are deciding the case. So Donald Trump is going to have a fair trial in Georgia, and the tr then the trial jury are the only ones who should be seeing some of the information that Jim Jordan is asking to be released right now. So that's what she's talking about there. It can compromise the integrity of the um, of the trial process if he if he's if she's forced to turn over these documents. And no judge is going to force her to turn the documents over. But she's just explaining the law to Jim Jordan because he's a jackass who doesn't know the law apparently, or he's pretending not to know the law. I don't know which one it is. All right. So this is the the best part of the letter. She had, she voluntarily chose to answer some of the questions, and this is what she had to say. Uh, Chairman Jordan, I tell people often deal with reality or reality will deal with you. It is time that you deal with some basic realities. A special purpose grand jury made up of everyday citizens investigated for 10 months and made recommendations to me regarding the charges against Trump and his friends. A further reality is that a grand jury of completely different Fulton County citizens found probable cause against the defendants named in the indictment for RICO violations and various other crimes. Face this reality. Chairman Jordan, the select group of defendants who you fret over in my jurisdiction are like every other defendant entitled to no worse or better treatment than any other American citizen. So this was in response to the accusation that she was doing this for political reasons, that it was her, her office just so much so hateful towards Trump. And that's why this happened. That's why she outlined the fact that regular citizens in Georgia are the ones who made both the uh, the the first uh, investigation, the 10 month investigation, the special purpose grand jury, and then the criminal indicting grand jury, both were different people, different groups of people from Georgia who looked at the evidence and found that there was probable cause to indict Donald Trump and his friends on these crimes. It wasn't her office. Okay. She didn't unilaterally arrest Trump. She had to, she has to get the okay from regular citizens in our community, in her community in Georgia to, um, to file charges against him, to bring an indictment. The citizens have to true bill the indictment before the criminal can be charged. Your notion that different standards of justice should apply to a select group of people is offensive. Here is another reality you must face. Those who those who wish to avoid felony charges in Fulton County, Georgia, including violations of Georgia RICO law, should not commit felonies in Fulton County, Georgia. In this jurisdiction, every person is subject to the same laws and the same process because every person is entitled to the same dignity and is held to the same standard of responsibility. Persons, socioeconomic status, race, gender, sexual orientation, or political prominence, prominence, political promise does not entitle them to an ex exemption from that basic standard. And that's why that's basically her saying, I don't care how you how much you love Trump or how much Trump supporters love him. He'll be treated just like any other criminal or, or let's let's be honest, sus, suspect. Let's be uh, accurate right now because he hasn't been convicted yet. As far as the legal system goes, I think he's a criminal. That's why I call him one. But technically, according to what's happened so far, he's an indicted suspect, right? Or a defendant. That's the technical term. So he's a defendant right now and he's going to be treated like every other defendant. That's what she's saying. And he has been. Okay, he's gotten a mugshot like everybody else. He's gotten charged. He's been indicted and he's going to trial like everybody else. And that's how it works. So not much else to say. She said it all. And I think she said it well. Um, she's doing her job. And Jim Jordan, who doesn't understand the law at all, uh, is trying to interfere with her work. 
And it's not going to be allowed. Obviously, he lost when he tried to uh, F with Alvin Bragg. And he's going to lose here if he tries to persist. Okay, And I think he will. He's going to get his ass kicked and embarrassed again in Georgia, just like he was in New York. And that's the bottom line. So Fanny Willis wrote a great letter. I'm very impressed. I'm glad that she laid all this down. So it's a very um, informative letter for everybody. So I recommend people read it if you haven't read it. But that's all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching as always. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. If you want to see more of my videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to keep current with the videos that I'm making. And if you have been watching for a long time and appreciate my content and the time that I put into these videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I post all the legal documents I use in my videos on Patreon for my patrons. I also post extra legal content when I don't have time to make videos on Patreon for my patrons. As a patron, you can also contact me directly on on Patreon to request a video or ask a question about a relevant topic. These are all privileges that I provide for my patron supporters. With all that being said, I'll see you guys in my next video. Have a very nice day.